the next one you know he is our expert professor let me narayanan he will speak on education mm. certain aspects uh, which will be concerned with our demographic scenario and then after and he can conclude we may have about 10 minutes or something like that for question answers and then we'll have them. thank you you know i had done so much of preparation for this speech i had gone and referred to research reports by mckinsey i even managed to get through one of my colleagues whose name i will reveal in a few minutes one of the latest issues of the economist which talks about youth education employment and so on and then you might be wondering why am i feeling so down the reason is very simple the same colleague as i was so excited coming onto the stage <laughs> came and whispered in my ears something that was so damaging <laughs> so i have an offer let's have a contract the offer is i have a presentation which is about 110 slides <laughs> and we have 30 minutes and there is a lunch but one of my friends is holding the lunch coupons so the contract is every 5 minutes you will give me a round of applause that will encourage me every time i crack a rather weak joke you will laugh at it and i'll try and finish in 20 minutes how's that my compliments to the speaker before me i think ma'am you manage indian names much better than we manage finnish names and i thought the organizers had set you two particularly difficult example subramanyam and lakshmi narayanan <laughs> but i have a feeling if i had included my earlier name which is ramakrishnan lakshmi narayanan you would have had a cough <laughs> that would have challenged you but uh, good news i was particularly encouraged by two facts that she mentioned one that there are some people who are enlisting for phd in their 70s that is remarkably encouraging for me and my daughter who called from the us and said papa you are speaking on youth and education about either of which you know precious little and my wife had the best response to that which is when papa doesn't when papa knows a subject he can speak very well for about half hour if he doesn't know anything about it he can speak the whole day <laughs> so that's a 110 slides the other remarkable encouragement was that there are still people working at 102 so we have some way to go um very quickly my most sincere thanks to dr vasu who is the main architect and the entire team including i am now used to getting whatsapp messages from professor madhvi around 11:30 at night that says professor lakshmi narayan where are the backdrops to the stage <laughs> and i say i have no clue what they are talking about matthew of course the absolute rock star even though you did tell me about the lunch but and dr vinod who man man manages the entire research agenda there are four names there archari priyanka akshay and vijay two of whom i was shocked to learn are your faculty because they look so young if they are typical indian youth then i think india ke sachmuch acche din aa gaye marvelous people to work with so thank you very much wherever you are I do hope you keep inviting me to more such speeches and give me a session which is not before lunch and the Jain University of course for providing the platform. Intention is to share some thoughts. I think the previous two speakers have done it remarkably well which is none of us comes here with cast time ideas or prescriptions. The idea is to say here are a few things that are running around in our head that are cooking. Let's see whether we can put our heads together. shaped by 30 years in the corporate world in the last 7 years 
absolute blast of a time in education. But I think even more important than that is I have a qualification which is I've been a dad for 31 years. I have my wife and I have two daughters, and I see remarkably encouraged to see the majority of the audience being women. I think women and dads, their daughters and dads have a wonderful relationship where you could be the President of the United States, Sri Barack Obama, deliver one of the finest acceptance speeches. The whole world is roaring its approval. You go to your daughter and you say, so how was it? And she says, yeah, okay, that was all right. <laughs> Daughters are absolute delights. Looking forward to hearing your views. I believe empower, educate, employ are really sort of interconnected. They are in one sort of virtuous cycle or they could very easily get into a very destructive cycle. So some of what we are seeing around the world is actually not new. If you went back into history, the reason why a gentleman called Adolf Hitler connected with such a large number of Germans is because they went through a 12 year time when large number of German youths were highly qualified, well educated, no employment. And we are facing the same trouble here. Urbanization, people not willing to take what they consider to be menial jobs, people who would rather sit at home after doing their engineering because they consider the jobs that they are offered not up to their mark, dangerous signals. It's a very thin line between dividend and disaster. I'll focus on the educate part of it. I mean, quite seriously, I did a lot of work. And uh, over the last five years, our team and I have been just walking around various seminars, meeting students and parents. At last count, we must have met more than 5,200 parents and students around the country in collective or one-on-one -on -one interactions. And would be happy to share the McKinsey report. PwC has an online resource called S plus W, Strategy plus Business. Wonderful set of articles under various titles. It could be general, uh, Generation Millennial, Generation C, which is all about connected, communicating, and community-oriented. And the latest economist, January 23rd, on youth. Inputs from industry consultants and global updates. Our first impression, to be honest, was not very encouraging. Disinterested students, despairing teachers, perplexed <coughs> universities, helpless parents, and unhappy employers. Almost reminded me, and I hope the audio works on this, I sometimes wonder, isn't it such a pity? Isn't it such a pity that these young boys and girls do really have to ask us to give the time give the freedom to be who they are capable of. Isn't there something we can do about it? And I, for one, do not accept that they are distracted or irresponsible or frivolous because it's the same people who in the last five years have created a flip cart, have created a Zomato, created an OA, created... And the lovely part is they are willing to take on the world's largest in these spaces. For every Uber, there is an Ola. For every Amazon, there is a Flipkart. For every Airbnb, hopefully, there will be an OYO variation. And there are Quickers, and there are Snap Deals, and every, every single domain you look at, it's the 21, 22, 23 year olds who are recreating history. It's not the 50 pluses or the 60 pluses who consider themselves to be very wise. So sometimes I think as much as we are taking away the childhood from children, we should take away the future from elders like me and give it back to children. I thought I would get more applause from the youngsters in the audience. At one level, so much has changed in a fundamental, fast pace. When I was a kid many years ago, 
a generation used to be 20 years and in front of my eyes it became 15 and 10 and 5 and these days they are saying a generation is 3 years it might become yesterday's generation today's generation these are some observations parents particularly talk about which is material scarcity when we were kids but a sense of fulfillment whereas today there is an enormous amount of abundance and surplus but a sense of dissatisfaction Working hard to achieve success was a given. But today there is a massive sense of entitlement. <coughs> when we speak to corporates, they are saying when a young employee joins, within a couple of years they are asking where is our promotion. And when you say what have you done to deserve it, they say we come to work sincerely every morning and go home in the evening. And the corporates have to then explain to them saying my dear child that's where you get your salary. There's something called monthly salary, that's what you get for coming to office. The approach of we versus I. Patient building of career, indeed life, versus this enormous hurry that's reflected in road rage, that's reflected in wanting to buy a house before you are 30, <coughs> wanting to own stuff. Like one of my counselors said, when a young boy gets a first job in a BPO, he goes in for a high-end mobile, goes in for a high-end mobile, both of which make sure that he gets a high-end girlfriend, and soon he's in serious debt. <laughs> Respect for authority, including parents, versus defiance, rebellion. When my wife and I were reflecting the other day, saying, these days, I find parents are very cautious about how they express their views to children. And I can remember when I was a child, children used to be very cautious about how to talk to parents. Disruptive innovations, new technologies, data analytics, people are now saying internet of everything, hard data, big data, social networks. As generations are colliding, workforces become more diverse. People work longer, traditional career models may soon be a thing of the past. There's a superb book written many years ago where they compare an organization to a clover leaf model. They are saying there will be core employees and then there will be people who will be consultants, there will be work at homes, there will be freelancers. Many of the roles and job titles of tomorrow will be ones that we have not even thought of. And in this context, I would urge you, if you already have not, Check out a TED talk by Sir Ken Robinson and a book called The Element, where he says he finds it ironic that large parts of today's jobs, industry, corporates, placement could not have been imagined 10 years ago. Whereas we are setting curricula that will last for another 25 years. Ken Robinson, TED, as well as The Element. And another one in this regard you must read and watch is a lady called Sherry Turkley on Alone Together. And then we sat down and said, shall we just go one level below the surface? Shall we start flapping around, moaning and groaning about how the new generation is no good? And just drill down one level deeper. And how many of you are aware of <coughs> this massively high-end scientific instrument? Does anyone recognize that? That's right, it's a kaleidoscope. And what it does is the same set of glass crystals that all you need to do, and today's younger generation may not understand this, but all you need to do is it doesn't require any power. It does not require any CPU. No need for any extra memory chip to be added to it. All you need to do is to hold it up in front of your eyes and gently twist your wrist. And the same set of reality gives you different perspectives. And I think that's what's really happening to us today. What has not changed is parents still love their children deeply. I'm often reminded of an old proverb that says, the way to hell is paved with good intentions. So nowhere in the country have I met a parent who wants his or her child to fail? Indeed, I think today's parents are a lot more invested 
emotionally, financially in their children than parents of my time. For a variety of reasons, they just seem to be enormously worried and anxious. So many times when we are at counseling sessions, even more than the children, even more than the students, it's the parents who are asking us deep questions about the syllabus. And I have been in situations where the child wants to do architecture and the mother is saying, no, no, I think you'll be very good in creative management. So we first counsel the mother, then we counsel the child. <laughs> Teachers still love to teach, for God's sake, otherwise why would we have gone into teaching? It is a tough job. And in many cases, it's a thankless job. It is physically, intellectually, emotionally, an extremely demanding career. I, in fact, call it a passion. It has to be a calling. Yes. Why would we be teachers otherwise? So I refuse to accept that teachers are uninterested or they just go through the motions. Absolutely not. <coughs> and I really love to see teachers in action who challenge who guide, who inspire their students. And if you really look at any one of us in the room, we would remember a teacher who made a difference in our lives. Universities and colleges continue to invest scarce resources. I really empathize with them because while people might think there's a lot of money in education, thank God investors think that so they put a lot of money, but in reality it is tough finding that money to invest in education. It is in many cases hand to mouth. Employers are still looking for bright, committed, sincere talent. And sociologists, technologists, evangelists continue to explore how to improve the entire process of learning and teaching. I deliberately put learning before teaching. Because the whole idea of a classroom interaction or any interaction between a teacher and a student is not just transfer of content, but it is transfer of knowledge. So these things haven't changed. The core issue, I believe, is stereotyping. <coughs> Unfortunately, many parents tend to think children are irresponsible, don't listen to them. Teachers think students are uninterested, too distracted. Universities think students need to be disciplined, in some cases almost like primary school. Employers think universities are not in touch with contemporary needs. They also think teachers are still using outdated curriculum with very little application, mostly theory. Students, of course, think all these bozos just don't get them. And the world would be a much better place without parents, without teachers, without university, without exams. You know what, many of us used to think that also, we just didn't have the guts to say it. <laughs> I come from a branding, so if triangles were asked to think of God, God would have three sides. For me, it's about human insight. I greatly believe that every lock has a key. I greatly believe that today's students are bright, can be hard working when they want to be can be really intellectually superior if something challenges them, if something excites them, if something engages them. You see the way they play a game for three hours. You see the way they are on the sports field. They are seriously connected. So there's no problem with these being dumb idiots, not at all. It is to do with how does one provoke, how does one connect with them? So can we look at students as customers? Customers who need to be offered a service called learning and teaching. Teachers as brand managers who need to package, position, merchandise and market their courses. Universities and I nurture as the factory and the retail stores. So if every one of us thought of ourselves as being in the service business, 
delivering customer delight wherever possible surprising the customers indeed sort of enveloping the customer in such a lovely brand experience that i don't need to tell them that they need 80% attendance to get a hall ticket i'll have students call me on a sunday afternoon saying sir tomorrow when are we opening college won't that be a fantasy imagine students what happening us on sunday night saying can we start the classes tomorrow at 7:30 instead of 8 wow and therefore what is the opportunity i am a huge believer that unless we bring back the joy of discovery in learning it ain't happening we can show in as much of theory as much of principles as much of case studies into people's heads almost like you see in these horror movies somebody is sawing open a skull and shoveling in information into it students are not going to remember any of it we do an experiment when we go around the country we ask them do they remember anything or what they what they were taught in their first standard fifth standard eighth standard when we come to the degree courses we stop because we are scared to know the answer you don't remember because you are that time memorizing it and you recognize that your success is entirely based on how much you recall on a particular day over 3 hours how quickly and legibly can you write how many extra sheets that you take does your ball pen work or not did you have a traffic jam on the way to the on the way to the the hall are you in the right frame of mind did your girlfriend or boyfriend wish you that morning did you get up on the right side of the bed and most of all what mood is in the evaluator because if you look at that system they are looking at 75 pages this i was really impressed there's a lady called veena rao in bangalore who specializes in mathematics teaching for the plus 2 students there are two reasons why i am terribly impressed with her reason one is the day that she starts her classes almost 75 80% of her students clearly say arithmetic algebra trigonometry we don't like we are scared so she says no problem i will teach you some theory for the next half an hour so today will be a short class so everybody is thrilled then she says you have to do 120 problems by tomorrow morning they think she is joking she says no 120 sums to be solved by tomorrow morning when you come they her classes start at 7 am as as somebody interested in this entire process i met her afterwards and said but ma'am why do you do that she says only way to get over fear of water is to take you dump you into the high end of the pool of course i am there to rescue you but once you get over that initial fright that irrational illogical fright that says mathematics is a monster that comes in my nightmares the only way to do it is behavior shaping attitude she does that but more important she tells the students i have 6 months to train you people this is going to be a collaborative process i want you people here at 7 am every morning and you will be here till 8 am every morning that 6 days a week you will not be allowed to bring in any coke or pepsi or chips into the classroom you will do every single piece of homework that i give you if you miss your homework for 3 days consecutively i will sack you from my class your parents please tell them i am not refunding the fee i am only sacking you from my class more important if you are late by more than 10 minutes your parents will get a call next morning they have to come with you at 6 am the students obey her at the end of 30 days they have overcome their initial fear of the subject and her track record is more than 80% of her students score more than 75% in their education their in their mathematics papers 
to me that's proof the reason i mention that is after having got them over that initial fear she has a lovely way of helping them discover the joy of mathematics the joy of algebra the joy of trigonometry and before you know what the students can't stop solving problems our customer today is really not eager to attend classes and i'm not even talking about lovely locations like this campus where your competition is not any other class your competition is big bazaar your competition is the capital your competition is the coffee shop your competition is facebook your competition is cricket your competition is dance that is being taught on the first floor everything else is a competition the traditional university system needs to be more external focused i hesitate to use the word insular but that's the word the environment is moving too fast and technology enables finding answers to any question a click away google is the world's finest teacher if you define the teacher's role as giving answers to questions and therefore what could be the role of the teacher of content of assessment and therefore of employment some thoughts as i keep clarifying i am not a professor i am not a doctor i am just somebody who has been working in industry for over 30 years who has an enormous admiration for teachers and education i truly believe good education is only thing that can transform you in one generation and we are seeing effects of that through bpos and the infosys of the world and good education is only one that proves that one candle can light a thousand and still keep going so some suggestions for teachers can we shift from teaching to learning can we go from one way communication to a dialogue this used to happen 5000 years ago when aristotle walked into a class and said listen to me very carefully because i won't repeat it but this is how whatever the principles of philosophy work we can't do that today can we can we go from memory and knowing to doing can we go therefore from theory to applications can we integrate technology into the pedagogy indeed the best expression i found was the sanskrit word upadhyay which everybody says is teacher is actually upadhyay is co learner i find that absolutely fascinating so whatever we are yes whatever the latest experiments around the world are talking about co learning have been told to us 5000 years ago so it's not just the pushpaka vimana or the nuclear as our prime minister claims which were there 5000 years ago maybe even principles of teaching and learning were there and my favorite expression can we go from a sage on a stage in all our old calendars we will find vasishtha with a flowing white beard talking to an obedient rama can we for god say go from there to a guide by your side so it's no more listen to me write down notes as fast as you can at the end of 55 minutes i would have transferred all my gyan to you it is can i get you to read some of this at leisure maybe sitting in a cafe coffee day listening to music with your friends and can i then look at using the classroom for collaborative learning and teaching implications for universities and colleges you are the finest platform and gateways open up to global trends partnerships and alliances with the finest in the world encourage indian research please high quality indian research invest in continuous faculty development actively pursue industry for joint development and innovation believe in your children trust them love them unconditionally empathize with them because they are actually going through some of the most difficult years of their lives physiologically emotionally all sorts of ways and my best part is a carl gibran when you have a chance i've just summarized it but it's a beautiful poem which says your children are not just your children they are your link with the future you must help them stand on your shoulders so they can see further aim higher and fly swifter 
beautiful words. Talks for the industry. Stop groaning about how only 10% of engineers are employable. Do something about it. Do not want to see another headline that says, today's colleges are not producing good enough talent. You are the final customers. Get involved in the process. Don't give me knowledge which is dry, saying less than 1%. Not interested. Collaborate with us on forming the curriculum. And therefore, instead of hiring and training, let's do training and hiring. But you actively involve yourself in this. Do not want you to be a consultant outside the system. There is statistics that says globally, an average employee spends less than 2.6 years with this company, particularly at the entry level. There is also research that says it takes the employer a minimum of six months to get a productive employee. So you really are talking about two years in which to get your ROI on that employee. Please get invested. Challenge them, engage them, have an open culture. Make sure you are seen as socially responsible and sustainable. Be more flexible. Do not say you have to come in at 9 a.m. and leave at 6.30. Physically, the employee is there. Mentally, he is far away. And this is advice. This is not suggestion. This is not implication. This is advice for students. Passion, persistence leading to professionalism. You are not a kid anymore. You are an aspiring manager who in three years or four years wants to be paid three lakhs or four lakhs to do a productive job. Learn to behave like a professional today. Have ambition certainly, but have mutual accountability. Please acquire these skills. My previous speaker spoke about life skills, curiosity, critical thinking, collaboration, problem solving, not even communication. I use the word persuasion and influence. Active listening, win-win negotiation. Develop the ability to ask the right questions. Don't bother about knowing the answers. Google has it. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. And since everybody asked me about placement, these are some of the emerging careers, information available with us. This is what it means in terms of skills. I love this. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn. And I remember a young boy, and I have one more video clipping I have to show you. So your lunch is going to be delayed by five minutes. He says, will this, will this mean I make lots of money? I love that focus. He said, learning is all right, Lakshmi. Will I make bucket loads of money? And my answer to that was, I don't know, but I think we'll have a blast. As in, let me see if I can locate that for you. I don't know where your manzil is, but I can promise you, you will have a blast going through it. And that's really it, isn't it? The whole joy of discovery, having a lovely life, where well, let's approach the future, and I'm dead certain, a glorious future, with optimism, energy, and faith. God bless you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Chief Learning Officer, I have learned today. I have, I have to be a junior learning, not an officer, assistant. I want to be an assistant. I really, he has come down to that level. Link with the youngsters. First link with the children. They are the link to the future. What a thinking, really. Something extraordinary. Gener Where is that generation gap? We have to become. And then, Today the ambition of youngsters, he says beautifully, the ambition of youngsters is to earn and spend and live joyfully. Previously, previous generation, they always thought about, you know, savings and sacrifice today's life and keep it for future. Why? Do it. Come on. That's what. And that is a positive message coming from Chief Learning Officer. Something really activating speech. Thanks a lot. Sorry for intervening and stopping it. But then the time is up for us. Just one question, if uh, uh, possible, by any good question, please don't articulate, but one question to the experts, somebody, or two questions maximum. Please do that. Uh, to Lakshmi Narayan, sir, and is, uh, <coughs> I don't discount on the young brains. 
ಅಂತ ಏನು ದಿ ಯಂಗ್ ಬ್ರೇನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಬೀನ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ಫುಲ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಎವಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಯು ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಇಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಎನ್ಹ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ದಿ ಇಕಾನಮಿ ದೇ ಬೀನ್ ವೆರಿ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಬಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಮ್ಯಾಡಮ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ನೈಸ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಯು ನೋ ಟು the story on jack and the bean shop right you need to you know have cross domains uh, beyond just projecting uh, uh, when you said the, the opportunities here are and uh, when i scan through into second most of it is against green based communication you see so uh, a, a a a cross platform of uh, other areas where uh uh human needs and wants are uh, at a disadvantage stage i'm sure the young brains if they parallelly uh, uh put across in those areas uh, i'm sure they will excel as well as green based community couldn't agree with you more uh indeed some of the work that's being done and i'm sure doctor would be able to add to that is all about um embedding humanities into engineering for instance if you see the latest initiatives on choice based credit system it's all about that so multidisciplinary interdisciplinary there's no question we ourselves are doing some work and jane has provided as a wonderful platform for that where we are trying to bring in life skills embedded into the curriculum through the course right from the first semester so at the end of six ma- six semesters or eight semesters not only is the student proficient in a technical domain either computers or management or finance but he is also a well formed human being uh, we have included portions for example on ethics on values on mutual respect on emotional intelligence couldn't agree more with you absolutely that's the way to go totally i talked about the empowerment really empowerment how the empowerment already you said who will empower who uh, that is really i also feel that uh, as it, uh, i feel that um, empowerment is at three levels i feel that the highest level is governance maybe the second level at home third level maybe the individual as you said the person who should have the empowerment on his and also the empowerment comes what empowerment is it economic social and psychological anyhow you have given even the parents should also have a parenting skills and he the excellent speaker has talked about the individual skills how it should come but really who will empower who that is the biggest answer if possible please uh, thank you for the question um, an example comes to my mind think of the, the women in saudi arabia and the uh, pre- prevention that they can't drive and they're still driving they are taking the, you nobody can change your life unless you take the first step even if somebody uh, empowers you you have to take that step so i i think it's a, it's we need to uh, uh, think more in terms of what is our role in any change and the role always starts with individuals you know the uh, nobody can give you that power you have to start that i think that's the only level that we start then it trickles down to other areas but you have to stop and the women in Saudi Arabia are doing that and i remember distinctively uh reading this from somewhere they said that don't come here and tell us how to do things we know how to do this we take steps according our tradition according to the levels of uh, of comfort because in change there's a lot of uh, of uh, discomfort and uh, you have to negotiate your roles all the time so empowerment is a very very big issue it can't be left to only you know governments i would like to add up yes uh, raise a raise a very important question who will empower whom it's very important that you know the governance structures are to be created legal constitutional social and in peer pressure etc in various areas and ways and that is where the empowerment comes empowerment is not just you know saying come on i empower you you go and do it it's not like that it has to be created within that total environment where we are all in 
that is one of the things. Of course, very difficult question, one question, very difficult to answer also to give satisfying answer. Thank you very much. After that wonderful interaction, I think all of us are certainly awaiting lunch. But just before that, it is indeed very important to thank our esteemed speakers for this plenary session. So, I'm going to call upon uh, Dr. Vasubi, the Director, School of Commerce Studies, to hand over a memento, a token of our acknowledgement, love and affection to Professor Dr. Sari Matila. We once again wholeheartedly thank you for being here, ma'am, and taking the time off your busy schedule and sharing the same with us on this platform. And if I may take the privilege to state, we look forward for many more such continued associations. Um, I'll again request the principal, sir, to kindly hand over a token of appreciation to Professor Lakshmi Narayani. So, and if I may remember of what you spoke today, we will certainly call you back for every opportunity that we get in Jane, whether it is to address students or teachers. On that note, we close the session. I personally thank Subramaniam sir for moderating this session and request sir to hand over a memento. As we close this session, uh, I would like to state that we are on schedule and I thank the delegates for maintaining the professionalism since morning which we have witnessed and ask you to uh, very kindly continue the same. Post lunch, we all assemble back in the very same hall. We have Dr. Charan Singh, who is a faculty member from IAMB and an advisor to RBI, an expert in inflation and many other matters which uh, are just beyond one sentence for that matter. And sir will be throwing light on the main theme of demographics in the form of a special address.